Hi guys, welcome to Thirmal Classes and Topperment Academy. Now I would like to discuss about Indian history which will be useful for our civil services prelims examination and the mains examination. Let me explain about first syllabus copy. Why? Because syllabus should be treated as a Bible of or else Quran of or else Bhagavad Gita of our examination. We require one thing. Before getting to the examination, we have to think about first syllabus. After that, we have to think about what to read, what not to read is important. If we read useless matters, that's, that will not be useful for our examination. Here we, here we, we require only the one thing, quick and smart preparation. Hard work is not only the key factor, we require the smart work also. Apart from that, let me introduce first syllabus. Okay. Apart from that, the first topic will be prehistoric age. Prehistoric age. The prehistoric age. From the prehistoric age, we majorly deal with the Paleolithic age, Mesolithic age and the Neolithic age. Lithic age's culture will be seen in prehistoric age. Lithic age's culture will be seen in prehistoric age. Okay. And the second topic will be IVC, Indus Valley Civilization. Most of the historians were thought that even in the 20th century, before the 20th century, in the 20th century, most of the historians were thought that only the first civilization is there in India was Aryan civilization. But before the one civilization is there, before the Aryan civilization, we can see the one civilization that is the one of the oldest civilization of the world is Indus Valley civilization. Okay, the Indus Valley civilization was especially uh, oldest civilization, one of the oldest civilization of the world civilizations. Okay, and third topic will be the Aryan civilization. Aryan civilization. This Aryan civilization also having the lot of lot of information. And by the Aryan civilization, we can learn the many things. Now we are living our life. But we are doing the many practices after the death, we are doing the something practice and when we are doing the homagunda and homagunda practices, we will follow the all things which is totally related to the Aryan civilization. From the Aryan civilization only we are learning and we are leading our life. The Aryan civilization which always explains about the practices and in Aryan civilization only we can see the Dvija concept. I think you all know that the Dvija concept. Dvija means a rebirth concept and Upanayanamu also one of the concept which we can see in Aryan civilization only. I think you people are aware of that the Varna system is there in a present society. The Varna system each and everything which was existed in Aryan civilization guys without Aryan civilization now we cannot imagine our orthodox culture. Are we following orthodox culture or not? Yes, we are following the orthodox culture. Yes, those orthodox culture, everything which was started in Aryan civilization only. Okay, everything orthodox culture which was started in Aryan civilization only. Just like the culture which is related to the Upanayanam. Upanayanam means the threading ceremony. The threading ceremony which is totally related to the Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya and Shudra. Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya and Shudra. Okay, Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra. Four Varnas are there. Among the four Varnas, only the three Varnas are eligible for the Upanayanam. Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, man only eligible for the Upanayanam. Shudras are not eligible for the Upanayanam. That's why the Shudras were fed up with this Aryan civilization and Aryan culture. That's why the Shudras were thought about the alternative and moreover women were also not eligible for the Upanayanam and women, was, women were also not eligible for the enlightenment. According to the Aryan civilization culture, women are not eligible for the enlightenment. Just imagine guys, if you, if you attend to my class, you, you know that 
you you if you attend my class you know that you will not get the rank it does means will you come and listen my class no it will not happen directly we came to know that with the following of the vedic literature vedic culture we will not get the enlightenment it does means will the women follows the vedic culture will women follow the vedic religion by the vedic religion women will not get the enlightenment that topic would be known to the uh women of the aryan civilization that's why women were also attracted toward the other religions women were also attracted to the other religions shudras were also attracted to the other religions why because if they follow the aryan religion they will not get the enlightenment this was already known to the people this was already known to the people that's why they attracted toward the new religions just like the next topic would be the mm, next topic would be the new religion existence after the aryan civilization new religion existence was there apart from that the new religions were new religions were buddhism jainism jainism ajivika religion ajivika ajivika religion this is how the many new religions were existed about the 64 new religions was existed in the 6th century bc only in the 6th century bc new religions were existed about the 64 new religions were existed that was said by satyanath ayar that was said by satyanath ayar do you know this guys new religions were created a great revolution in indian society new religions were created a great revolution in indian society why because all were fed up with the aryan civilization aryan religion why because aryan religion which gave the higher priority to the brahmins kshatriya vaishya man only the society was totally dominated by the man society was totally dominated by the man that's why the women and the common people shudras were attracted toward the new religion okay is there any mistake if you are not getting the priority if they are if we are not getting the priority if they converted to the other religion is there any mistake no mistake is there why because we are not getting the priority by the aryan uh, religion okay this is how the new religions were got the priority in the 6th century bc okay the buddhism was the major religion which was created a great revolution but according to the gautam buddha and according to the vardhamana mahavira there was no existence of the god there was no existence of the god according to the gautam buddha and according to the vardhamana mahavira but after the death of gautama buddha people were thought that without god existence how will we get the enlightenment this question was arised in the mind of arised in the mind of the common people arised in the mind of the common people that's why people were okay people were again started attracting towards the vedic religion then buddhism saints should think about the uh, buddhism alive or buddhism should be alive or not if the buddhism should should be alive the new religion new revolution should be created in the buddhism that's why in the buddhism new beliefs were started new beliefs were started okay new beliefs were started that in the buddhism gautama buddha was not only the man gautama buddha was treated as god gautama buddha was treated as god in the buddhism after the death of uh, gautama buddha after the death of gautama buddha 100 years after the death of gautama buddha 100 years buddhism okay in the buddhism we can see the great revolutions the nothing but the gautama buddha was nothing but he is a god he was treated as a god and he was started worshiping by the common people common people were started totally worshiped uh, gautam buddha god the idol structure even gautam buddha god the idol structure even in mahayanam okay in the mahayanam i think you all know that in indian society if anybody is doing very help to us if anybody is doing help to us we treat them as gods in the same way gautama buddha also treated as god in the mahayanam i think you all know that the <coughs> in the buddhism for the campaigning of the buddhism four councils were occurred four councils were done how many councils were done 
how many councils were done the four councils were done apart from that in the first council there was no changes in buddhism in the second council there was a change that gautama buddha was treated as god by some people and gautama buddha was treated as by gautama buddha was treated as a human by some people okay two divergents or two two uh, branches were divided from the buddhism buddhism was divided into two sects buddhism were divided into two sects the first one is taviravada sect first one is the taviravada sect second one is mahasangika sect mahasangika sect this mahasangika sect this mahasangika sect people okay the mahasangika sect people were thought that gautama buddha was god but the staviravada people were said that the gautam buddha was not the god gautam buddha was a human okay i think you all know that our indian society which always says that if anybody who says the good they would be treated as gods okay just like the dera baba i think you you didn't listen about the dera baba most of the, after arresting of the dera baba about the four states were fought for dera baba religion okay i don't know what whatever he done or not, nothing is required but here what i would like to say gautama buddha was treated as god by some people gautama buddha was treated as a human by the some people okay the two sects were existed in the second buddhism council whoever followed the gautam buddha as a god they were divided from the buddhism finally staviravada sect was existed and the mahasangika sect was existed the staviravada sect people were thought that gautam buddha was a human but the mahasangika people were thought that gautam buddha was a god okay this is the way buddhism was later converted into 18 sects these again two sects were divided into 18 minor sects these two sects were again divided into 18 sects from the 18 sects we can see highly spread sects are 10 sects in india just like the sarvatrivadin apara sheli uttara sheli rajagiraka siddhartika chaityaka shali hundam these all are the sects that can be seen totally in all over india from these you will come across the definitely one question in prelims perspective okay this would be the fourth topic buddhism jainism new religion existence or the new religion existence or the uh, topic would be the fourth topic after that we will read the mauryans or mauryan history or mahajanapada history mahajanapada history and after that we will read the south indian history south indian history also the important history why because we have to read about the sangam age literature sangam age literature should be the important topic we have to discuss after the north indian history after that uh, the advent of the persians advent of the persians have you got it guys i think you all know that after advent of the persians we can see the alexander invasions and indo greek existence shakas existence after that the kanishka ruling even the kanishka ruler he the great ruler he actually taken birth in a foreign but he treated india as adopted mother okay kanishka was a great ruler who especially ruled the indian subcontinent and moreover during the kanishka time period we can see the two major sects were existed in the buddhism that is the hinayanam and the mahayanam even the hinayanam also says that gautam buddha was a human and mahayana which always says about the gautam buddha was a god okay this is the way we can see the foreign invasions also after that we have to read about the guptas after that we have to read about the guptas okay yeah on the gupta topic you will come across at least one question in the either in the prelims or in the mains examination why because the gupta era called as the golden age of the Sa- culture or gupta age called as the golden age of the sanskrit language okay right in the guptas 
on the Gupta topic in previous examination, numismatic of the Guptas was asked. Numismatics of the Guptas was asked. Okay, whatever guys, after the Guptas, we have to read about the Rajputs. We have to read about the Rajputs. Okay, here I am discussing about the Indian history, culture and art and architecture. Okay. Art, art and architecture will be discussed in the later classes. Don't worry guys. Here I would like to discuss about the first syllabus. What are the topics will be given in the pre prelims examination and the mains examination. Okay guys. Yeah. Here we are going to discuss about the Rajputs. After the Rajput again we have to discuss about the South Indian history. The Badami Chalikyas, Rastakutas, Kalyani Chalikyas, Kalyani Chalikyas. Next, after that, we have to discuss about the Pallavas and the Cholas. Pallavas and the Cholas. Okay. This topic will be discussed in the South Indian history, guys. This topic will be discussed in the South Indian history. Apart from that, okay, in the South Indian history, these dynasties are very, very important dynasties. Why? Because the great architecture can be seen in the Badami Chalikya to the Chola time period. Why? Because the Bradishwar temple, the great temple can be seen and the great uh, Nasik caves and Elora caves. Elora caves, the 16th cave. In the 16th cave, we can see the great Kailasana, the temple which was specially constructed by the Rastakuta ruler Krishna. Here we can see the great architecture and heritage sites also can be seen over here. Heritage sites also can be seen over here. Okay, and here we can see the next topic will be the next topic will be the Delhi Sultanates, Delhi Sultanates, Delhi Sultanates, and moreover, we'll discuss about the Mughals, Mughal Empire, Mughal Empire. Okay, these would be the major topics of the medieval. Okay, major topics of the medieval were the Delhi Sultanates and the Mughals. We have to discuss these two, especially in the revenue perspective and governance perspective. Why? Because in the medieval, we have to focus revenue guys. Why? Because the Delhi Sultanate, in Delhi Sultanate only the Ikta system was started. In the Mughal, we can see the great army system was started. That is the Mansabdari system. The Mansabdari system was also actually brought from the Mongolia. Mansabdari system which was actually brought from the Mongolia. Do you know that? Do you know the Chinggis Khan? Yeah, the Chinggis Khan family only. Family only started Mansabdari system which was especially brought to India by the great Akbar. Great Akbar. Okay, Mansabdari system only the one of the reasons which paved the way for the death of the Mughals. Would you like to learn everything? Would you like to learn everything? You just come and join in the thermal classes, guys. We will assure you that definitely you will be placed in the AIR, All India rank in the UPSC in the next year. This is pretty sure we are giving the assurance, guys. Okay, let me explain about different concepts which is related to the medieval. In the medieval, we can see Bhakti movement and the Sufi movement. This is the very, very important religious moment. This is the very, very, very important religious moment. That is the Bhakti, Bhakti and the Sufi movement. Okay. From the Bhakti and Sufi movement, at least one question will be given in upcoming examination. If my prediction is correct, if my prediction is correct, the Bhakti and Sufi movement Okay, this question will be appear in examination and moreover, we have to read the rise of Shivaji. I think you all know that the great ruler of South India is and Middle India is the great ruler, the Shivaji, Shivaji, Shivaji. Okay, Janani Janma Bhumischa Swargadapi Gariyasi. This slogan which was especially given by Shivaji Guru Samartha Ramdas. What does the meaning of the Janani Janma Bhumischa Swargadapi Gariyasi? The mother lap and mother land lap is greater than the heaven. 
This is the meaning which we can see. The great personality, Samartha Ramadas was the guru of the Shivaji. He only said, Janani Janma Bhumischa Swargadapi Gariyasi. If we listen these type of the slogans, we'll get the great patriotism or not. Yes, are we getting the patriotism or not, guys? Yes, we are getting the patriotism. We are getting the patriotism. From the Shivaji time onwards, we can see the patriotism, guys. From the Shivaji time onwards, we'll get the patriotism. Uh, if the Shivaji wouldn't be there in the medieval, we couldn't imagine Hinduism. Okay, I'm not anti to the, any religion. What, I'm, I, what I would like to say, Shivaji was a great ruler who supported the Hindu, Hindu religion, who supported the Hindu culture. That's what I would like to say, guys. Okay, after Shivaji, we have to read the advent of European Union. Advent of European Union. Okay, have you got it, guys? Advent of European Union. And after the advent of European Union, we'll discuss about wars which was especially done by the Britishers. The British wars, just like they were participated in the Carnatic wars. They were participated in Anglo-Mysore Wars. They were participated in the Anglo-French Wars. Okay, many wars can be seen, guys. Carnatic Wars, also known as Anglo-French Wars, Anglo-Maratha Wars, Anglo-Mysore Wars, Anglo-Sikh Wars. The wars totally done by the Britishers. Everything we will be discussed in Indian history also. In Indian history only. Okay, have you got it, guys? Yeah, after these wars, we have to discuss about how the Britishers were ruled. East India Company, how India was ruled by the East India Company. Okay, after that we have to discuss about the regulation, uh, regulation acts and after that we will discuss about the Charter Act. Okay, yeah. Let me explain. Let me explain guys. Yeah, here after the advent of the Britishers, we will see the wars of the Britishers. After the wars of the Britishers, we will discuss about the... British rule, British rule and moreover economic system, economic system, governance, governance and social conditions, social conditions and the religious conditions during the British rule. Economic conditions, governance, social conditions, religious conditions during the British rule. After that, we will discuss about the Renaissance movement. The Renaissance movement is a very, 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 very important movement which we can see in Indian history. Why? Because there are many social evil practices can be seen from the ancient to modern. There are the many social evil practices can be seen from the ancient to modern. There are many practices like the Sati, child marriages, women were not allowed to uh, have the education, women were not allowed to access the education and the polygamy, polygamy and uh, Kanyashulka, Kanyashulka it does means uh, dow dowry will be given to the girl and they used to buy a girl, they used to buy a girl by giving the money, the Kanyashulka, there are many evil practices can be seen in all over India. Okay, even the Devadasa system also can be seen in all over India. These all are the evil practices which was especially thought to abolish by the great social reformers like Rajaram Mohan Rai, Periyar Ramaswami Nayakar, Narayan Guru. Even the Narayan Guru, what he said, he thought to abolish the caste system or not? Yes, he thought to abolish the caste system. Apart from that, the one caste, one religion, one God. The slogan was given by... Narayana Guru, one caste, one religion, one God. The slogan which was given by Narayana Guru. Okay, the, he was thought to abolish the caste system. He was thought to abolish the totally caste system. And moreover, here we can see the many, many social reformers were tried to abolish the caste system. They thought to abolish the inequality between the common people. Okay, in common people also you can see the inequality based on the caste. Few are saying that they are the upper caste, few are saying that they are the lower caste. Untouchability is also one of the evil practice thought to abolish by the great Jyoti Bapule. 
the great Jyoti Bapu ever thought to abolish the untouchability or not? Yes, he only written the Gulam Giri book. Gulam Giri, Gulam Giri does mean slavery. The Gulam Giri book was written by the Jyoti Bapu The many books were written by the Jyoti Bapu and the Ambedkar, 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 Ambedkar was also a great person who thought to abolish the untouchability. Apart from that, the Ambedkar Garu, he totally destroyed the Manusmriti. Why he destroyed the Manusmriti? Yes, in the Manusmriti, we can see the Varna system. That's why he destroyed the Manusmriti. He thought to abolish the Varna system. He thought to abolish the inequality in the society. He only written, he only written, who is Shudra's annihilation of the caste system. He thought to uplift the Shudra's. That's why he written, who are Shudra's and annihilation of the caste system, the book which was written by the great Ambedkar Garu. Okay, they were all the social reformers tried to empower the common people who are lower based on the caste. Okay, and after that we can see the national movement. The last topic will be the national movement. Even the riot movements also can be seen or peasant movements and moreover the tribal movements also should be seen or we can see in the future classes guys if you come and join in our thermal classes we will be be with you 24 by 7 till you get the job we will help you guys this is pretty sure thermal logic thermal classes will give you 100 percent 100 percent guarantee you will be placed in our UPSC examination okay the last and final topic will be the national moment in the national moment I think you all aware of that INC was especially fought for the empowerment of Indians the INC was thought to unite the Indians actually the INC was started by the even foreigner but most of the Indians were joined in the INC and they were thought to empower the Indians and the INC was thought to unite the Indians majorly okay Britishers was totally tortured the Indians. I think you don't know. Britishers were tortured the Indians because Indians were treated as a slaves. Indians were treated as a slaves. In some areas, the Britishers were kept the placards and the posters that Indians and Indian dogs should not enter into the our premises. This is how they written. Just imagine that the Britishers was totally tortured the Indians. They done and they followed the divide and rule policy. They followed the divide and rule policy. That's why Indian leaders were came forward and they were thought to unite the Indians. They were thought to unite the Indians. Lack of unity only. The Indians were totally went under the control of the Britishers or not. If we, if we would have the unity in 1857, we would have got independence in 1857 itself. 1857 itself, but we did not have the unity. Then INC was thought to unite the Indians. INC was thought to unite the Indians. That's why INC became uh, important and made a crucial role to get the independence and the INC independence movement was started from 1885 to 1947. From 1885 to 1905, we have to say that that is the moderate era. And 1905 to 1920, we have to say that that is the extreme era. From 1920 to 1947, that is the Gandhian era. That is the Gandhian era. In the extreme era, we can see the extreme level of the national movement extreme level of the national movement okay in the extreme level of the national movement only we can see the bengal partition why they did why they thought to divide the bengal based on the religion yes bengal was divided based on the religion why because india is slowly getting unity indian people are getting slowly unity they were thought to destroy the unity between the indians they were thought to destroy the unity between the Indians. That's why the Risley was suggested to divide the Bengal to the Karjan. He, re, he ordered to divide the Bengal to the Karjan. Karjan was the Vaishrai. The Risley was the 
Indian State Secretary. The Indian State Secretary Rislevert said that Bengal United is the power. Bengal United is the power. If we don't divide the Bengal, the Indian people can vanish the British rule. This is how the Rislevers stated that. Uh, due to the this statement, the Lord Karjan was decided to divide the Bengal. In 1905, the Bengal partition was done based on the religion. Okay, in that movement, in, during the Home Rule movement, only the great Balagangadhar Tilak said that Swaraj is my birthright, I shall have it. Swaraj is my birthright, I shall have it. This is the slogans which was especially given by the Balagangadhar Tilak. The Balagangadhar Tilak only the great national leader in the extreme era. Extreme era. Okay, we'll discuss each and every minute point in uh, live classes, guys. Come and join in thermal classes. We will be help you. We will be, we will help you to get the UPSC ranks. Don't forget to join in thermal classes. All the best guys. This is Datu Metre. I am signing off. Thank you guys. Thank you very much.